everybody, Matt here with Time. I've been getting a lot of questions from our clients all over the nation about fiber and whether or not you should run fiber in your homes. One of the things we do here is we have sort of a consulting arm, uh, sort of a design service, and clients from all over the nation send us their plans. We design a system and send it back to them with notes on how to either DIY it uh, or ship them out gear that they can self-install. Sometimes we even travel and go out. But in any event, we get a lot of questions from these clients coming in and asking us how they should wire their home, what gear they should use. And one of the questions we're getting a lot of right now is whether or not you should use fiber in your home. So I wanted to take just a second and answer this question for you and hopefully it's helpful. So with fiber, the interesting thing is there's kind of two discussions. You would use fiber for your home network or you would use fiber for the video in the home. There are really two different applications and reasons why you would use fiber for your network, reason why you would use fiber for your video. And today we're not gonna talk about the network. Uh, we can cover that in another video, but there's plenty of reason alone with video to use fiber and that's what we want to cover here so I'm going to talk to you about fiber for your TVs and your projectors and some of the reasons why you might consider using fiber so I want to give you just kind of a, a quick overview of where we're at with uh, video content and 4k content and how it relates to fiber okay so real fast imagine you have a 4k uh, blu-ray player so you've bought a new Sony blu-ray player or a Samsung blu-ray player and you're using a 4K Blu-ray disc and you're sending that out to your TV. So I know that you can get 4K content from Roku or, or Apple TV and that's great. It's not the conversation here. Uh, this is if you wanna have uh, video content with the least amount of compression. So you're using something like a Blu-ray disc or maybe you have something like Kaleidoscape where you're getting uncompressed content and you're trying to send that out to your TV. So currently where we're at in, in today's world of video, it requires 18 gigabits of space or bandwidth to send this kind of content from your Blu-ray player to your TV. All right, so 18 gigabits. Okay, that's what we need. Now the problem is most of the HDMI cables that you have currently already out there in people's homes can't do 18 gigabits. They can do like 10 gigabits. The Cat6 that we use can only do 10 gigabits. Even when we put a balance on the end of it and convert it into HDMI, it still only gets us 10 gigabits. So how are we getting the 4K content from our Blu-ray player or our Kaleidoscape out to our TV or our projectors? Well, what we do is we pull all the information out of it. We call it compression. Some people call it lossless compression, meaning that the quality or the, the method of compression is such that your eyes can't really perceive it, but you're really compressing this, this information down in order to send it out to your TV or your projector. One of the examples I heard once that really made sense to me is if you take your drink of choice, uh, the example I heard was orange juice, and you pull out all the water, and you send it across the United States, and then you pour water back into it. It's never going to taste the same as it did when it was fresh squeezed. Maybe another similar example is to take your drink of choice and dump two-thirds of it out and fill the remaining third all the way back up with water. I mean, you've kind of distilled down the drink. It's not the same, right? That's what we're doing with our 4K content. So I'm going to take you through this really fast, try not to geek out too much, and then I'll explain where fiber comes in, okay? 4K is what most of us are familiar with, and I heard this from a forum in CD. I apologize, I don't remember the gentleman's name, but it was a really good example. He said, this is our, think of it like a meal. You're going to a nice diner, and you're going to sit down and have this really fun meal. 4K is the main dish. HDR, 10-bit color, uh, they call this uh, subsampling or chroma subsampling, and then frames per second. These are the side dishes, and they have a huge impact on the final image that's on the screen, okay? So, and don't worry, you don't have to remember all this, but I'll run through it real quick just so it kind of makes sense. 4K content is the resolution. It's four times the resolution of the HD TVs we've been watching for the last decade, so it puts a lot of information on the screen for us. And with that, we can do something called high dynamic range or HDR, which means that the range of, of light or brightness from your darkest, inkiest blacks to your brightest whites is much greater. It gives us more detail, more contrast, makes the picture pop. And part of that high dynamic range is something called 10-bit color. We're not gonna get into that, but it, it basically means there's more color, uh, a broader spectrum of color on the screen to help our eyes see the detail and the color to make it pop more. There's more, think about like a painter painting a picture and we've put more color on his palette that he can choose from to paint images on the screen. So we're gonna have a lot better color, a lot better picture. It's all kind of part of HDR. Then 422, this is called uh, chroma subsampling. And basically what's happening is they've figured out that they can take one of the three primary colors completely out of the picture. And if they manipulate it right with the other two colors, 
they can put the picture on the screen that we want and it'll look pretty good even though they've completely moved removed one of those colors and they call it 4422 or 442 there's different variations of this form of compression but regardless they're completely removing one of the primary colors out of the video and then they're trying to manipulate it so that it'll still look good they call that chroma sub sampling and then lastly we have frames per second 60 frames per second is where most people are trying to get with their 4k content and all of this together requires 18 gigabits of bandwidth or speed and so what's happening is companies are trying to figure out how to get more information to the tv with less compression and most of us right now don't know any better because the content we're watching from the apple tv or the roku looks so good in comparison to what we've been watching none of us know any better but you're going to start to see better and better content and you're going to be aware of what you're losing when that happens and you start to get a taste for what the content can really look like on your TV or your projector, you're gonna be able to wanna to get this information out to your TV or projector with the least amount of compression possible. And the good news is there are sources out there like Kaleidoscape and a lot of the 4K Blu-ray players that allow you to send uh, a high quality picture out to your TV. As long as the cabling between the source and the TV have the bandwidth necessary to push all that information out to the TV. So. In our current homes, CAT6 only moves 10 gigabits. Same with CAT6A, it's only gonna push 10 gigabits of speed bandwidth out to the TV, even with balance and extenders. HDMI, for the most part, is the same way, unless we're talking the HDMI 2.1 spec that just rolled out, we're gonna be able to do more gigabits, but on limited distances. So we're not gonna be able to run you know, three, 100 meters, 300 feet across the home like we can with CAT6 in balance. So, in order to reach these speeds and these bandwidths, we have to use fiber. And to make it even more interesting, just to really give you a feel of where this is all headed, this is where we're at now. And already, we can upgrade a little bit. So if you remember, this was 12-bit, 10-bit color before. It's 12-bit color. 444 means that there's no compression on the color. They're not pulling one of those primary colors out. And then we're moving to 120 frames per second because for whatever reason, with 4K content, it tends to look a little bit better when it's 120 frames per second. They did some really cool demos of this at CES and the, the, the difference was immediately noticeable. It just looked better. Now, this takes somewhere around, I think 22 and a half, 23 gigabits of speed. And nothing can get you there except for short runs of HDMI with the 2.1 spec, shorter runs of HDMI with the 2.1 spec, and fiber. And to make it even crazier, 8K content is on the roadmap, and it is coming, and it will require 48 gigabits. So in order to push that content out to our TVs, we've got to use fiber. And by running fiber to our TVs and our projector, it gives us the bandwidth in the headroom so that as this kind of content becomes available to us, we can push that content out to the TV and the projectors without any kind of compression. Now, here's a cool thing about running fiber. A lot of people get nervous about the price point, but the trick here is that you run the fiber and you don't terminate it until you're ready to actually use it. So when we wire up homes right now and clients want to use fiber, we run CAT6 to all the TVs, and then we also run a fiber. For the immediate future, those clients are most likely just going to use CAT6. They're going to put balance on it, and they're going to do video distribution the old-fashioned way. But when they're ready and they start bringing in devices like Kaleidoscape where they get their 4K Blu-ray player and they want to have the very best content they can possibly have without any kind of compression, they're all set up and ready to go. And they can use that fiber cable that's already run out to those TVs. They can then put that end on it, terminate it, and start using it to send, send video out to the TVs without any kind of compression. So I know that's a little nerdy, a little geeky, but hopefully it helps you understand a little bit why fiber is becoming really, really important if you're wiring up a new home. So I'm not saying that you have to run fiber. I talk to clients all the time that say they don't care. They, they cut the cord and they're gonna watch stuff. They don't care if it's compressed. They're happy with it as is, and that's great. Don't run fiber. If you want to resell your home in 10 years and you want it to be future-proof or future-friendly, I highly recommend considering fiber at least for your TVs. You can also go the conduit route and run conduit, but if you price it out, it's about the same. Hopefully that's been helpful. Hopefully you enjoyed watching this as much as I enjoy making it for you. And if you have a friend that's looking to build a home, wire a home, and you think this might be helpful information, I would love it if you'd share it with them, and we'll see you around.